Welcome to the Fusic Lung Module. My name is Ashley Miller and I'm going to show you in this video how to do a basic lung ultrasound examination for an acutely unwell patient. So first of all we need to know what probe to use. The one probe which is best for overall use is the curvilinear abdominal probe. So I'm going to show you this one to start with. So we need to know where to place our probe and we're going to do an exam using three points on each side of the chest, the upper anterior, the lower anterior and the posterolateral point. So the upper anterior point is mid-clavicular line, second or third intercostal space, and we put our probe longitudinally like this, kephalad to cordad. And we get an image like this. So the first thing we're looking for is this thing called the bat sign. So what we can see here is some soft tissue under the probe. We can see a rib here with a shadow underneath it, a rib here with a shadow underneath it, and then a bright white line about half a centimetre below the rib, which is our pleural line. So for reference, this is the head end of the patient. This is the foot end of the patient, so cephalad and cordad, which is just ultrasound convention. And the first thing I'm going to look for is something called lung sliding. So there are two pleural layers, visceral and parietal pleura, that slide over one another with respiration. And the first thing we look for is this lung sliding. Now to see this optimally, I want to make a few adjustments to my machine. So I'm going to make the depth very, very shallow. I'm going to put the frequency as high as possible because we're looking at something superficial and I'm going to turn the gain down. So having a shallow depth, a high frequency and a low gain will make lung sliding easiest to see. So here we can see our ribs again and this bright white pleural line in between them and you can see this line moving backwards and forwards, left and right with respiration as those pleural layers slide over one another. So this is normal and if those pleural layers aren't sliding over one another it signifies that there is a disease process going on. So if you can hold your breath for me. So you can see here now the lung sliding has stopped. There is the occasional little bit of movement in time with the heartbeat. OK, breathe away. And that movement that's in time with the heartbeat is called the lung pulse. So if there was a pneumothorax, we'd see no lung sliding and there'd be no lung pulse. So after we've identified lung sliding, we can drop our depth a bit more. And we can look for these artefacts called A-lines. So the pleural line is the top white line but we can see other white lines repeated down through the image. There's one here, and there's one here, and there's one down here. So what's happening here is the sound waves are coming down through the soft tissue, and they're hitting the pleura. Because there's air underneath the pleura, uh, soft tissue and air conduct sound waves uh, at a very different velocity. And what this means in practice is that when the sound waves hit an interface like this, all of those sound waves are reflected back to the transducer. Now this means that we can't actually visualise the lung. There is no sound waves penetrating down into the tissue of the lung. So all this grey stuff here is artefactual noise. Now some of those sound waves, when they hit the pleura and bounce back to the probe, some of those bounce off the probe and back down to the pleura again, so they've bounced backwards and forwards twice. And that generates this second white line here, which looks like the pleura. Some of those sound waves bounce backwards and forwards three times, which generates the third line here. And some bounce backwards and forwards four times, which make this fourth line, etc. So these lines here, these artifactual representations of the pleura line above, are called A-lines, and they just signify that there is air below the pleura line. So you will see them in the normal lung. You'll also see them in a pneumothorax. What distinguishes the two is that in a pneumothorax there'll be no lung sliding, whereas in normal lung there will be lung sliding. Now, note the position of my probe here, which is very perpendicular to the chest. 
if I angle my probe off to one side, you can see I still can see the pleura. Well, it's got a bit thicker, but these A-lines have disappeared. So if you want to see the A-lines, you need to be directly 90 degrees to the pleura. Again, if I turn it, move over to the other side, the A-lines disappear. So you do need to be completely perpendicular to the chest. So pathology we might see here other than lung sliding would be things like consolidation, which will obviously be, be below the pleural line, which will be echo pore areas. Or sometimes you can see things called B-lines, which look like comet tails coming down from the pleural line. They will extend from the pleura to the depth of the image and they'll move backwards and forwards with respiration. So that's our first examination point. We're going to go to our second examination point, which is just below the outside edge of the nipple in a man, or ju just sorry, just above the outside edge of the nipple in the man, so it's just about here. Now, it's important to note here, if I just have my probe perpendicular to the bed, I'm going to get a very poor image. Because the thorax curves around, I need to have my probe perpendicular to the thorax, so I need to be angling it in to the chest, like this. And you'll get a picture uh, that's very similar to uh, the picture in the upper anterior point. So you know, I'm just moving between the rib spaces here, you can see a rib, a rib, and a rib shadow. This uh, appearance that looks like the wings of a bat, as it's been described. So that's, that's the two rib shadows there. Uh, supposedly like the wings of a bat and we can see the pleura and the movement of the pleura left and right there and if I get my probe at 90 degrees I can see these A-lines as well. So finally we move to our third examination point and we're going to look on both sides of the chest I'm going to show you this side though for the purpose of this video so I'm going to, if you go from the lower anterior point and you go laterally and posteriorly as far as you can and a couple of rib spaces down and put your probe on the chest here, you'll then see some rib shadows, I can see pleura and I can see some of the spleen here. Now these rib shadows get in the way of what I'm trying to look at. So because the ribs run like this in the chest, I can rotate my probe slightly to get in between the ribs and those rib shadows have now disappeared. My probe is mostly still cephalide cordad, so it's still head end and feet end, but I've just rotated it enough to get the rib shadows out of the way. Now I can move my probe around a bit now to get as good a picture as I can. I'm going to drop my depth and what I'm seeing here is spleen. I'm seeing the pleural line and I'm seeing the back of the diaphragm just at the bottom of the image there. Now the reason that it looks like some of the spleen has been cut off and I can't see all of the diaphragm is because there's air in the bottom of that lung in the costophrenic angle. And as I said before, air makes all the sound waves reflect back to the probe, so I can't see anything underneath it. So the spleen is providing an echo window for me to be able to see to the depths of the image here, but the lung is blocking the sound waves. So this is what a normal lung base should look like. You won't be able to see all of the diaphragm and all of the spleen or liver. As soon as there's pathology, however, a pleural effusion, consolidation, atelectasis, the sound waves will be able to pass through uh, whatever's there and you'll be able to see all of this in really nice detail. So we can still see here, I can see that there's pleural sliding as our model breathes in and out. You can see the lung coming across the screen, sometimes described like a curtain coming across. And you might see, oh, we just saw there, if I can go back, what looks like a beeline here. So it doesn't quite go to the depths of the image, but this is what a beeline looks like, as I was describing in the uh, anterior scanning. So it looks like a comet tail coming down from the pleural line. And one or two of these is completely normal, but if there's lots of them, it suggests that the lung is wet. 
or inflamed. So I've described earlier how we use the curvilinear probe for all of our lung ultrasound examination. Sometimes it can be difficult to work out whether there's lung sliding or not, particularly if a patient's ventilated where the apices of the lungs don't move as much, when there's lung disease so that it doesn't move as much, when there's low tidal volumes. And so if you're not sure, you can use the high frequency linear probe to get a better resolution of the pleura. So we can put it in the same place here and we still see our rib shadows here. We can see the soft tissue nice and clearly and we can see the pleural line in more detail than we can with the curvilinear probe because of its high frequency. So if you're not sure, use this linear probe. Make sure your depth is still shallow. If you've got a focus point, put your focus point on uh, a level with the pleural line. And often with this probe, you'll see little, uh, what look like imperfections in the pleural line, little blebs that you'll see moving backwards and forwards with lung sliding that help you to identify that it's present. Now we teach to have the probe in a cephalad cordad direction and you may wonder why we do this and don't turn it uh, 90 degrees like this. So if I do do this, I can see the pleura in greater length and more detail, so it's good, good to see the lung sliding. However, I can't see the ribs. And if I just move my probe higher, so it's over a rib, then the sliding disappears. And it can be quite difficult to distinguish whether you're looking at something uh, with, or, or looking at pleura that's not sliding, or whether you're looking at the rib. So if we have our probe in a cephalad cordad direction, you can see the ribs, you can see the pleura, all in the same picture, and then you won't make a mistake.